me, I showed my demo that I did real fast of parallax animation of a uh, news bumper for protests. And when you do your parallax in lab, think of something that's personal to you that you want to do that uh, could be used like maybe as a bumper, uh, maybe a Comic-Con convention, uh, adopting local pets. Uh, you could do one on protesting if you want. Uh, you could do sports are good for parallax. You want a separation between each layer that you silhouetted out. So I'm going to show you how I did mine, and you can think of what you're going to do for yours. I'm going to add a new comp to this. I'm going to, I have my original work file already in the Canvas folder. I'm just going to recreate this for you guys uh, at home. So I'm going to call this Protest Parallax. And this is the step-by-step -step of everything I did. Even though you already have my original work file, you'll be able to see how I got there. Uh, so we're going to need the Parallax Effect project. Now, these are the images I pulled off of Google to do it. It's three pieces of broken glass, the street background, and the protesters. In my file, I duplicated the protesters. The more layers you have to your parallax, like separated across Z space, the better it's going to look. So I had these elements, that's five plus this duplicated with six, plus the text is seven. So that's a pretty nice amount. You can go as much as you want. You need at least four. I, I think you should shoot for six or more, though. Okay, so I'm going to put all my stuff in here. I know I misspelled it. I don't care. <clears throat> now I'm going to import everything. Three, parallax demo. We'll put in this folder just to make it easier to work off of. Save my work. Save frequently. The street is what goes on first. That's the background. And I can scale this a little bit up or down, but first I'm just going to place all my elements. Next, I'm going to do the protesters. Everything else will need to be silhouetted out. The, the background is fine. So I'm going to see all this. Now, if I wanted to, I could go into Photoshop, mask all this out. It'd be pretty uh, annoying. So I'm going to try to do this the quick way with the Luma key because the dark is what I want. It's the strongest value. Okay, so now it's on here. I'm going to key out brighter. And it already worked. Okay, well that was pretty fast. There's a little bit of some distress that I don't want there. Now we're starting to get back in. Okay, so now this guy is not distressed. I just changed my tolerance and my threshold. Watch, I'll zoom in. That's 25 and 255. If I go zero, zero. See that? That's a little clunky. I don't like that. See, even just going 20 and 60, it automatically removed it. So I'm happy with that effect. And you saw how fast that was. That's one of the good things about a maximum contrast image. So I'm going to scale this back up to 100% just to have it nice and big. So that's the first one. I already have the effect on it. I'm going to duplicate it. I've got two of them now. I'm going to right click. And what I did was I did transform, flip horizontal. And this one, I'm just going to push over to the side for now. And this one, I'm going to push over to the opposite side, line it up how I see fit once I'm doing my actual camera movements. Just that it's not as obvious that they were set up that way. And plus when I separate these in Z space, it's going to be a lot more different as well. That was a great uh, sentence right there. Okay, now broken glass. Oh, come on, don't crash. Okay, I'm gonna save so I don't crash. This is the large piece of broken glass. This is gonna be the topmost layer. And it's just a little small for the screen. And I think I flipped mine so that the broken glass was on the other side. So I'm just going to do that as well. Transform, flip horizontal. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to throw a Luma key on it. And I'm going to want to get out the darker, not the lighter. See here, I got out the brighter part. Already we're getting some good results. Like that. Yep, 
that's about where I had it. That's looking good. Now the smaller broken glass. Come on. This is why I save frequently, save often. I've got two different ones, and they're both transparent, so I'm not going to need to mask them out. This one's going to go right here. And this one's going to go between the protesters and the city background. Sorry for the lag on my computer. Save. Just hide all these layers. I'm going to... I'm going to press the U key so I can see better. I'm going to drag this out a little bit. This is my big broken glass. That's the first transparent. Okay, so that's the first uh, one there. Okay. And then the second one I'm going to put right here. Alright. So do we have all the images? Two broken glass, that? Yes, yeah, so it's broken glass, the big, the small, two protesters, that. And I'm going to put the text in between the protesters. I'm just going to type the word protests All right. oh, and that's what happens when your caps lock is on I turned off my caps lock sometimes I don't even listen to myself I'll make that black aerial bold that's fine for this uh, demonstration now I'm going to save layer new camera because we're doing parallax I'm gonna keep my settings 1.8 uh, 35 millimeter Hit okay and I'm gonna add a light layer new light I'm just gonna keep this default as is and in my thing I colored the protesters red so that when the light hits them there's a little bit more space so I'm gonna use a tint effect Double click it. I'm going to change my black because the only color in there is black. You can make it whatever color you want. I'll make mine red. I'm going to copy that effect. Select like my other protesters. Now I've got the same effect on both layers. I'm going to go to toggle switches and modes. And I'm going to enable 3D on all my layers. I'm working fast, but this is just for your reference. You could always hit the pause key. I'm going to turn off the light for now, just so I can see a little better. I'm going to put that in last. Okay, now, we want this in between these two. So it's the big glass on the top, closest to the camera, then some transparent glass. Maybe, let's put that between those two. And you can see how my layers are broken down. These are not going to be animated. They're just going to be pushed through Z-Space. If you want... Like I said, you could have one group of protesters pop up on the x-axis, so they'd flip up like they did in the bumpers we watched in class. I'm going to get my camera. This is the camera I want. I'm going to give it a little bit of an angle. If any of these items are too small, I'll just scale them up. I'm going to zoom out so I can see my layers better. Now, broken glass, kind of like where that's at. Go move it a little bit further out. There we go. So as the camera pushes in, we'll be going through it. That's pretty good there. These first protesters, take that to be closer to the glass. So if that's minus, I'll give it even more space. There we go. That's almost minus 800. So I'm going to put these about half the distance. Come on. Here's a neat little trick we haven't covered in class. I'm going to knock down my resolution to half. Now I'll be working faster. This is pretty intensive on the memory of the machine. Okay. It's going to be more blurry, but oh, you know what? I'm going to do custom. You could always change it. This is one pixel for every 18 pixels. So this is one eighteenth of full resolution. Now we're going to go through a lot faster and I'll be getting less lag. Okay, this I'm going to put half the distance. So I'm going to do like minus 400. This one I'll do minus 100. 
And this guy, I'll push up to about 300. Okay, and then these. 500. I'm just doing this numerically with the numbers, shifting them in Z space. Now I'm going to go to quarter resolution to see a little bit, because that's just jumbled mush. Now we can see a little bit better. Okay. So we're going to want the camera to end up, let's say, seven seconds. I'm going to transform. It's going to be the Z space. Let's see what we got going on here. I'm going to want to come in close. Okay, so that's where we're going to want it to come in, and this is where we're going to want it to end up zoomed out. So we're coming about here and the camera's going to move in to the end. Oh, I didn't keyframe. Haha, ha. joke's on me. Click my stopwatch. Okay. And we're going to push in to about there. Okay, now, so this is where we're going to end up. Close up all my layers. We'll go to where we go to the beginning. This city background is too small. I'm going to scale it up. Let's see how that's going to go. We're going to move in. All right, so we're going to want more space. The big broken glass. I'm going to want closer to the camera. So as we push in, we're going to go through it. So I'm going to move it up like that. So now as the camera pushes in, see I'm just moving it in space like that to match up to where my camera's at. So it'll be here when we start, pushing through it. There we go. Now we're going through the broken glass. That's out of the way. Move it over there. That should be good. So now as we push in, oh, that's much nicer. Okay. I like that. That layer is done and looking good, so I'm going to hide it. Just get it out of the way. Have less mess to deal with. Let's see, this was minus 1600, so I'm going to make this minus 700. Push it out further. Let's get them out further. These are the guys in the front. Okay. Now we're going past them, liking that. They're there. They're moving over. There we go. Like that. This broken glass. Let's see what this one looks like. This one I'm going to scale down a bit. And let's just go to position. Let's move it over. Let's move it up. It's all just experimenting once you're in this mode. So that's past the first group of protesters. I'm just pressing the P key to hide these. Where is my type? Let's find it. Okay, it's behind the city background. That's that's what happened. It was beneath the layer in the back. Let me show you minus 78. It was at 367. Once I move it closer to the camera, it's past. There we go. Okay. I'm kind of liking that. Keep that there. Move it up a bit. Now you can read it. Yeah, idea of what it's saying. Pushing through. 
So now these other protesters, I bet you they're behind the city as well. Yep, because there they are now. Right there. That's the closest they can get. I'm liking that because there's a nice amount of space there. And then the last broken glass needs to come out a bit. to just move it up in Z space. Let's scale that down a little bit. Move it some more in Z space. Okay, kind of like the relation between there and there. Now let's see what happens when we add our light. So I'm going to select all. Hit U. Now all my layers are just showing that and my light let's move the light out in Z space there we go I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more in my window right about there and now we're gonna start moving the light and like I said I'm just working quick to try and demonstrate how I did that now you're starting to see how it's lighting up the scene better Save frequently, save often. Okay. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to crank up the intensity. Now you can see the protesters that are closer to the light are brighter than the ones that are further away from it. It's causing some separation visually in space. Change my radius. Change my fall off distance. Like that. Okay, now I don't want the city to get the light background, so I'm going to go to my material options, accept lights, off. So that was the twirl down, oops, sorry, of the city. I don't want that to accept the lights. So I twirl down, go to material options, and I turned it off. So now you're starting to be able to see things better. Come on, close. I'm going to save. The first protesters, let me check their material options real quick. I can have them. I'm going to want to cast shadows. Nah, I'm not liking the way that one's looking. So I'm going to turn that off. Nope, that's not doing anything. Let's try the diffuse. Here we go. Yeah, that's the people in the front. I'm going to turn down their diffuse. There we go. So now the darker is in the front and the lighter is in the back. I'm just changing some of the material properties to get the effect that I want. Because I wanted what's in the front to be brighter. So we'll move this down a little bit. There you go. Now you can see. So I'm going to go to high res. Save it. And there we go going through the broken glass there's the separation of layers and your final image and all we did was animate the camera on the Z dimension right there you could move your light you could animate your light you could do whatever you want for this I'm gonna put this file in as well so you have two different versions to look at they both came out different because you know, like I said I just did them really quick with very little thought to demonstrate the parallax effect